you know, we come here for a better life. We come here to try to help our families. You know, we come here because we want to improve our lives and the lives of those people around us. If we're able to sit there and talk about the similarities that we have, the love that we have for our children, our faith, I think that all those things could make such a difference. And I think Little Village, is, it's, it's a huge example of basically the power that lies behind the community, you know, coming to this country and, and trying to find a better life. Second Federal is one of the oldest continuously operating financial institutions in America. It started in Chicago's Little Village and now has branches nearby in Archer Heights and Cicero. The bank's roots go back to 1882, when five community-spirited men established the Columbia Building and Loan. In 1918, 24-year-old John Surosinski became managing officer of the bank. Under his leadership, the bank converted to a federal charter in 1934 and became second federal. Later, the bank was led by John's son, E. John Sirosinski, followed by E. John's son-in-law, Mark Doyle. Through the years, Second Federal celebrated many anniversaries and renovations, and the bank became a key booster and leader in the community. My first recollections of Second Federal when I was a little girl in the 40s is when my mother used to take me on the streetcar to go, go to the vault at Second Federal on Pulaski. Second Federal was always involved in the community. They were in parades. They were in different activities which were going on in the community. You know, they not only just serve banking, they try to serve the community also. We were very community oriented. I mean, we did the parades. We had the Posada in our parking lot. You know, the uh, Christmas Posada, Second Federal and the Chamber of Commerce here, they would have the reenactment of the birth. They'd have the manger and all that in our parking lot. And they would give away fruit and watches. Uh, Second Federal's been there forever. Um, they are one of the first banks that were catering to the community. And uh, we're still here. 40 years later, we're still here uh, doing business in the community. Today, Little Village, located on Chicago's busy 26th Street, is known as Little Mexico of the Midwest. But it wasn't always that way. I grew up in, uh, in Little Village, um, this growing community. Um, I went to a local grammar schools, high schools. Um, I was part of the conversion, you might want to say. Um, I moved into the area like in 1972 and the community was basically Eastern European, but little by little started changing to Hispanic, uh, to the point where at this point it's 100% Hispanic and um, mostly Mexican. 26th Street at a certain point had 12 banks, and it's only like a one and a half mile uh, stretch of the street that was industrial or commercial. And some of the banks, I want to say more than half of the banks disappeared in, in those times where Little Village was switching from uh, Eastern Europeans to Hispanics. We were the pioneers, and I say we because I, I, even though I was not working here at that point, but you know, uh, uh, just being proud of, of the legacy of Second Federal. We were one of the first institutions to open uh, banking accounts with matricula consulares paving the road for uh, the inclusion in, into the banking system of the immigrant families. But during the recession, beginning in the 2000s, Chicago neighborhoods were hit very hard. Second federal customers lost their jobs and they struggled to repay their loans. You know, so we live in a, in a hard-working community, a blue-collar blue community. Uh, individuals around here are workers that are basically gardeners in the landscaping, construction workers. So when the economy went down, these were the individuals that were affected the most severely. So it was a domino effect. You know, individuals aren't able to work, they're not able to pay their mortgage, and it just snowballed into something that became um, what at one point we thought was a tragedy, you know, Second Federal going under. Yeah, I mean, I can go back to the day when the FDIC showed up at our doors and they pretty much said Second Federal ceases to exist. When Tech and Federal 
uh, was shut down by the FDIC, it was it was a difficult transition. Uh, we, it was a sense of uncertainty. We nobody knew what was going on. So it really affected the community. In past decades, I had never seen any, anything affect the Hispanic community that much. Even when the FDIC seized us in July, and the institution closed at the close of business that Friday, our members came back on Monday. There was a sheriff in every lobby, and our members just came in and proceeded to do their business. When I started with Second Federal, the, and having a previous banking career of 20 years when I came here, it was surprising to me to see the trust the families had with Second Federal. They would come in with their bills and letters they would get for the, our customer service reps or our tellers to read it for them and, and translate and let them know what it was and help them fill out letters. And um, it was amazing to me to see the generations of people that would come in and say, my parents bought a home here and they paid it off and now we're getting a home here and we're gonna pay it off. In spite of the best efforts of the bank and their customers, Families began losing their homes at an alarming rate. The bank's delinquency rate on mortgages climbed to 30 percent. Second Federal's turnaround began with the Resurrection Project, Chicago's largest Latino-run community development organization. The Resurrection Project is a local non-for-profit that has, uh, as they call it, several pillars. They do immigration work, they do financial empowerment work, uh, they do advocacy, um, and you know they have been a tremendous partner for, for Second Federal and Self-Help in Chicago. The Resurrection Project was concerned about the many Latino families who would likely lose their homes if another bank acquired Second Federal. So TRP took an unusual step. They contacted Self-Help Credit Union. Working in partnership with TRP, Wintrust Financial Corporation, and the MacArthur Foundation, Self-Help found a way to merge with Second Federal and immediately focused on stopping foreclosures. Altogether, nearly 400 families at risk were able to recover and stay in their homes. Today, as part of the Self-Help family, Second Federal continues its long history of serving immigrant families. I myself immigrated to this country when I was nine years old. Coming to this country wasn't an option for me. I was a child. And like many other individuals, we were coming over here because we needed it and we wanted a better life. You know, growing up in Mexico, I can recall uh, the hardships that we endured. Little Village is a community that is full of hope. There is a lot of uncertainty. We find ourselves today faced with the uncertainty of a political climate that we don't have answers to or for. But the resilience of a community is, or the resilience of this community is such that we will overcome and they will overcome. Why? Because they're not here for a handout. You know, we're not here to take advantage of a system. We're here to contribute to a system. At Second Federal, the task is to both remember the past and build a better future, creating and protecting ownership and economic opportunity for all.